positive. There are stories that just inspire you. And there are people who inspire you. And when their stories inspire you, the person and their story, you know you've really got something. And so I just became aware in the last 48 hours about uh, Dwight Ballantyne and uh, the Ballantyne Project and Denise Trottier and uh, the Bird's Nest Project. And I, I, I'm so I'm honored to speak with them both, to have them both on the program with me from Maple Ridge, British Columbia. Dwight, hello. Good to talk to you. <clears throat> hello. How's it going? Doing great. How are you doing? No, I'm doing good. Just relax and have some coffee. Excellent. I'll be having one in about 10 minutes. <laughs> Denise, good to speak with you. We spoke this morning by phone and uh, the other day. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having us. So let me just, I, I, frankly, I'd, there's so many places to begin with this story, but I'm going to do this. Dwight, let me start with, with uh, you're from the Montreal Lake Cree Nation in Saskatchewan. Uh, correct. Yeah, it's around from. Right. And there was a, a methamphetamine crisis exists there, and it's a particular threat to youth on the reserve. And, yeah, that- and, and you didn't want to, you, you, you had a drive. There was something, you have a drive to excel and succeed. It had to do with education and hockey. And so pick up the story for us, please. How did you, how did you make your way from the uh, Montreal Lake uh, Reserve to Maple Creek and Denise Strachier? Oh, uh, well, I was very fortunate enough to have an opportunity come my way. Before I had the opportunity, I was like just lost in the environment and, I always wanted to leave the reserve some way, but there was no opportunities that came. So uh, the Bird's Nest started up a program for education, and I, I heard about it on social media. And after I heard about it, I started contacting them, and that's how I got the opportunity to come this way. And you found your way to, to Maple Ridge, and what you've accomplished in the last three years is absolutely phenomenal. Denise, please pick up the story. How does, how does Dwight come into your life? Um, The bird's nest started uh, because one of my son-in-laws, Andy Bird, had a cousin who was wanting to do something other than be on reserve. And so uh, he told us his cousin's story, and we said, okay, well, let's bring him out. So my husband and I offered our spare room, and we brought him out, and then we started learning more and hearing more stories about other people that might want an opportunity, too. So we decided to create a nonprofit called The Bird's Nest, and we worked with uh, another good friend of ours, Natasha McDonald, and really we had no idea what we were doing, but we just knew we needed to do something, so Dwight was actually one of the people that um, I started talking to on Facebook Messenger, and he was the second person that came out in February 2016. And and you've been together since? Yeah, yeah, he came out as part of the Bird's Nest college prep program. Well, at the time, he just came out. There was no college prep program, but um, Natasha and I worked with our school district here, and we created a program, a one-year program, and then uh, started deciding to bring more people out. But he came out before that even happened. And, and out of this grew the Ballantine Project. Yes, that was a that was a kind of a transition that's happened over the last three years because of everything that Dwight's managed to accomplish. So, Dwight, talk to us, please, about what the Ballantine Project. This is you. Uh, what what you've accomplished, what you've done, and 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 what it's been like to to get there because you have accomplished so much. Yeah, well, I, I actually don't know how it all happened. I just had like the right people beside me, and uh, Denise and her husband like are a very good support system and they took me in as one of theirs after I moved here and then having them in my life and other people kind of encouraged me to do more stuff so I started just it started off with hockey for me like I just wanted to get a job so I could play hockey here and a lot of good things have happened through hockey and that's pretty much where my success was and I just had the drive to get myself to where I wanted to be because I, I knew that if I was going to move away from my reserve I wanted to like at least uh, make an impact with with myself and like try to do my best instead of doing what I always did and I just wanted to like I just wanted to like basically basically just find a way for myself and just succeed in any way that I could possibly. And you'll act as a motivator for so many other young people, both on and off reserves. Uh yeah, yeah. With the Valentine Project, yeah, we wanna. I want to make a way for them and give them the same opportunity that I've had because I know what it's like to be on a reserve and so many people want to leave, but they don't have the resources to leave. So 
the Ballantyne project is something that we uh, thought about right after I came back from uh, Europe when I went for a hockey tournament there in March. Uh, Denise, pick up uh, pick up the story here, please, because I I, 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 I'm, I was reading the uh, I'm lost for words. I was reading I was reading about Dwight, and I'm reading that uh, last November you were awarded the Premier's Indigenous Youth Excellence in Sport Award for your organization of the Hockey Skills and Leadership Program and the leadership you displayed in March of this year. You represented Team Canada at an international hockey tournament in Europe where Team Canada won the tournament for the first time in 22 years. Uh, and now uh, you've launched the Ballantine Project to inspire individuals living on remote reserves to pursue an off-reserve life if they so desire. That is, um, I'm handing it back to you, Denise. Okay. So, yeah, since Dwight got here, he's uh, really worked hard, done incredible things. Um, the the Premier's Award came because um, we decided, as part of the Bird's Nest, to put together a hockey skills and leadership program that Dwight would be the director of, and he basically just put together the same training regime and everything that he had done in order to get where he had so far. Um, and we invited young adults from remote reserves to come and participate in that hockey program. And so that's why he won that award for the, he was mentoring them, training them, um, and he was honored with that award because of that, because of his leadership. And then, yeah, then he got an opportunity to play for Team Canada in Europe and uh, took that. So, yeah, it's been amazing to watch everything that he's managed to do in the last couple of years. So, Dwight, when you go back, and I, I'm, I'm assuming you go back to the reserve, you go and meet with your friends, you meet with your family, you meet with the folks that you've, you grew up with. How are they responding to what you've done? <clears throat> uh, when I, well, it, it's kind of weird. Like, when I go back home and tell them stuff, they kind of, it's hard, hard for them to believe that all the stuff that's been happening. And it's kind of hard to tell them because I, I honestly don't know how it happened myself, but I just keep going. And every time I tell them something good has happened, they're kind of like, they're, they're very proud, but they kind of just have no words. You know what I mean? So I think like I do. That. Yeah. So, but they're very proud and they always encourage me to keep going. So to my family back home, they, I wouldn't be here without them and their support. And I always call back every once in a while just to see how they're doing and tell them what's going on in my life. So they're very proud and that's pretty much it so because i don't really i don't really go home often but when i do i like spend a week or two just to catch up with them and go visit my grandma and just do a lot of stuff that i usually did back when i was home just see them how they're doing and talk to them yeah um uh D denise this has to be it really has to be uh um a motivator, uh, a sense of, there has to be a sense of, I can do this as well among uh, Indigenous youth who might not see a, a great opportunities on a daily basis, but they look at Dwight, and if he can do it, I can do it. Yeah, for sure. And that's definitely part of it. Um, with the Ballantine Project, one of the really big things that we want to do is we want to start to create a conversation and some awareness because I think part of the problem is that um, there's not a lot of opportunity for these young adults that are on reserve, and I think it's mostly because people actually don't even know they're there. Yeah. They, they don't know that there's all this amazing talent and all these amazing people that are stuck in a place that um, they just don't get any attention. We so sort of feel like they're invisible. So they can, they can do this on Facebook, right? Yeah, like what we're what we're doing is um, Dwight's girlfriend Alexis. She is putting together a social media campaign. Right. Um, it's called We See You, and what we're trying to do is get Canadians talking and make Canadians aware that all these young adults are out there and they have amazing talent and skills and all kinds of things that they could do. So, where can folks go to uh, to see this now? Go on Facebook. Right. Go to the Valentine Project okay. on Facebook. Right. And that's where we're posting everything that we're doing. Okay. And they can also participate and help us because um, what we want everybody to do yeah. is hold a sign that says, We see you. Okay. Hashtag the Valentine Project. 
we want as many people as, as we can to do that okay. so that we can start to make some awareness happen. All right. Thank you both so much. And I'm going to tweet this out and I'll put it on my uh, web page as well. All the best, uh, uh, Dwight. Great on you. And Denise, thank you so very much. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. If you want to hear more, subscribe to The Roy Green Show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you find your favorites. And if you like what you hear, leave us a review and tell a friend. I'm Roy Green. Have a great weekend.